YouTube crew, what is going on? And welcome back to another video. Now, people always come to me and they're like, Joe, what are your graphic settings? How do you get your game to look so good? So today, I'm gonna take you through my graphic settings, but before you just skip ahead to where I actually go over the settings, I want you to hear me out on two quick things. First, my PC build. I put my full PC build down in the comments below, but the two main components that you wanna know are I have an Intel i7 10700K processor with a 3070 graphics card. It is a great build. I also got it overclocked by Sense Quality. This is not an ad. It's not a partnership. I'm not sponsored by them, but they are a fantastic company. They overclock my PC, huge jump in frames, and it costs $150. So if you are interested, I'll put the link down in the description below for you. Second, I want to talk about how I think about my graphics, what I look to accomplish. I am a huge fan of balancing performance and quality. I want high frames but I also want my game to look really good. So I'm always balancing those two things, trying to figure out where I can gain an edge in both. As you can see here, I run high frames, but I also have a crystal clear, very colorful version of Rebirth Island. So now let's get into the graphic settings. So let's go ahead and jump into my graphic settings and then we'll drop into Rebirth Island to talk about my NVIDIA filters, which is what really gives Rebirth that vibrance and that color for me. Now, in terms of my graphic settings here, first things first, display mode. This should be on full screen, not full screen borderless. Make sure you have this on full screen screen. Next up, your screen refresh rate. This is kind of a big one here. If you can afford it, which is, this is a good investment, make sure that you have a monitor that can handle the output that your PC is giving you. If you are running 240 frames, but your monitor is only running 144, then you're capping yourself. So you want to have a screen refresh rate higher than what your frames are. Now, render resolution, make sure you have this on 100. As you go up, you are going to limit your frames. So make sure you have this on 100. Next up, dynamic resolution disabled. Aspect ratio is going to be automatic. Sync every frame, V-Sync. Make sure you have this disabled. You will get a little bit of screen tearing as you can see here, but it's not something that you'll really notice unless you are recording. Like I notice when I'm recording that there's some screen tearing, but you're not going to notice it when playing. If you have it enabled, you are going to get input lag, which we do not want. So make sure you have that disabled. Custom frame limit, have this on unlimited. You don't want any cap on the amount of frames that you can run. Then we have NVIDIA highlights disabled, display gamma 2.2, and our NVIDIA reflex low latency is enabled plus boost. Now in terms of our quality here, FOV, obviously that's preference. I run mine on 116. That's just kind of where I have found to be the most successful. This is kind of a big one, camera movement. Make sure you have that on least. I mean, this was a pretty early change with Caldera, but make sure you have this on least. Now, in terms of our streaming quality, we'll want that on low. Texture resolution, you can put this on very low, but I've I've noticed that the texture resolution is really bad and there's really not that big of a frame difference between very low and low. And this is again, one where I balance performance and quality. I think the quality for very low is awful. It is awful, like grass doesn't even render in and it just looks terrible. So I actually have mine on low here. Texture filter anisotropic we have on low, particle quality on low, bullet impacts and sprays. You can have this enabled or disabled. I have it on enabled just because I do some testing and stuff. I actually think there is a plus one FPS. Don't quote me on this though. Plus one FPS, there be, there's basically no difference. So whichever one you want. Tessellation is gonna be disabled. Dismemberment and gore effects disabled. On-demand texture streaming, make sure you have this disabled. Now we go into filmic strength at zero, film grain at zero. NVIDIA DLSS disabled, anti-aliasing off, depth of field disabled, world motion blur disabled, weapon motion blur disabled. Now kind of here's the next kind of big section that we go into, shadow and lighting. Obviously that was a lot of processing and stuff, but shadow and lighting here. Shadow map resolution is going to be on low. We're going to enable cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows. I've seen a lot of things where people actually disable these. You want these enabled. Particle lighting is going to be low. Direct x-ray tracing is going to be on disabled. Ambient occlusion disabled and screen space reflection disabled. So here's kind of one more time, a one more little scroll for you as you're kind of walking through here to, as we're finishing up here, to drop into Rebirth and talk about my NVIDIA filter. So let's go in and take Rebirth Island to the next level by introducing some color and some vibrance. So now let's talk about how I take Rebirth and make it look nice and pretty. Now, the first thing that I do want to say is adding filters is going to cause some frame drop. So you really want to figure out what works best for you. Again, as I mentioned, I like to balance performance and quality. Let me just show you. So right now, just sitting here, I'm running about 230 frames. And if you put on my filters, I drop to about 180 to 190 frames, which my filters, you're, we're going to talk about this. We're going to break down brightness, color, and detail. But if you were to just put on the color, 
you know, it still gives you a decent amount of color, makes it look a little bit better, but you're not dropping nearly as many frames. So you just want to try these out, figure it out, play around. I'm literally just sitting on top of Water Tower, hopefully where nobody comes and tries to kill me in the heli or anything, which happened like two minutes ago. But you can test it out here and really see what works best for you. Now, in terms of my filters... Here are my filters. First up, we have brightness and contrast is kind of the top. We have exposure at negative one. We have contrast at zero. Highlights are going to be at negative 50. Our shadows are going to be at 100. And our gamma is going to be at 13. Next up, we go into our color to really give it that vibrance. And like I said, you can play around with these. A lot of people may look at this and be like, well, that's way too vibrant for me. You can adjust these levels a little bit and really see what works best for you. My tint color is at 14. My tint intensity is going to be at 18%. My temperature is at 0.5. And my favorite, which is the vibrance, is going to be at 54.8. I mean, we're just making this thing nice and colorful, which makes it super nice. Last thing is we are going to add some details to this. We're going to sharpen it a little bit with 39%. We're going to add a little bit of clarity at 19%, a little bit of HDR toning at 85%, and bloom at 0%. Like I said, try these out for yourself. Add one of them. See how you like it. See how your frames are. Add the next one. By the way, in terms of things I would add, probably color, detail, and then brightness and contrast. Those are kind of the order that I would try them in. Although if you end up running all three, this is the order you should put them in. So I hope you found today's video helpful with the best graphic settings. Make sure you have these so that you are running good frames and, of course, making your game look nice and pretty. Hope you found today's video helpful. Subscribe down below for more. Let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.